Hey, hey, this is Dr. J. Uh, moving on with chapter five. Uh, we've been talking a lot about polynomials and the graphs of polynomials and finding the zeros, also known as the x-intercepts of polynomials. Um, today we're going to take a little bit of a, what's going to seem like a diversion from that. And we're going to talk just about one thing, mostly, uh, division, different types of division, and ultimately uh, put this into context with the rest of the polynomial functions that we've been talking about so that um, we can maybe use division, hopefully, <laughs> um, to solve some of the problems that maybe we couldn't have solved um, using some other method like factoring or something like that that we knew in the past. Um, so first thing I want to mention is that the division is an algorithm. So I'm going to show you two different algorithms. We have what's called the long division algorithm. We'll start with an example. An algorithm is a fancy way of saying a step-by-step -step procedure. that is repeatable, a repeating procedure. You learned about this um, procedure probably in you know elementary school with um, basic division. You know, suppose I wanted to say, suppose I wanted to say, uh, what is, you know, 19 divided by 5 or something. And so the algorithm, the division algorithm, um, we have names for all of the participants in the algorithm. The inside is called the dividend. The outside is called the divisor. And then we perform the algorithm. It usually starts off something like this. It starts off by guessing. So question mark throughout this lesson will be me pausing and taking a guess. And so I'm guessing what, sometimes I'll just say what, or how many times does 5 go into 19? And you can't go over, all right? You want to be as close to 19 without going over. And so that would be 3. Yeah. 3 is then called the quotient. Then we follow this up by multiplying 3 times 5. That gives us 15. Then we subtract. Then we take the remainder. And we say 3 and 4 fifths. And that's how you would read this. 3 and four-fifths. Four is called the remainder. Four is the remainder. Three is called the quotient. I mean, I guess so that you have a full set of notes. Uh, 19 is called the dividend. And five is called the divisor. Now, once you've learned this um, algorithm, you can repeat this process over and over and over again. In other words, if we had a larger dividend and the quotient continued, we could then just bring it down, repeat the process, guess, guess how many times it goes in, then multiply, then bring it down, then subtract, and so on and so forth. So throughout this lecture, keep this in mind so that if you ever get lost or you forget what step you're on, you have this as sort of a backup plan. Everything you learned, you know, when you first learned how to do long division is still relevant. It's still true. It's still the algorithm that we've been, you know, teaching, I mean, my entire life and probably hundreds of years before I was ever born. Um, and then I want to mention one more thing. When we say three and four fifths, the word and really means plus. So 
so we often will say three and four fifths but what we really mean is three plus four fifths and I'm going to get more into this description of the number um, in this in, in, in my subsequent examples when I say well the quotient plus the remainder so it's quo I'm just abbreviating plus rem remainder over div divisor and that's the way that we remember the division algorithm or at least that's the way of retaining what it is that you just did um, let's go ahead and just start off with an example of division using this algorithm but I can't just use simple numbers like 19 and 5 and 3 and 4 we got to use polynomials because we're in chapter 5 which is all about polynomials so I'm gonna give you a problem Let's say uh, 2x squared plus sorry 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x minus 16 divided by x squared plus 4. So we're going to follow this algorithm. I got to erase this at some point, but I'll leave it up there for another second. So the numerator is called the dividend. The denominator is called the divisor. And now we're going to do this procedure. So the dividend goes inside That's your dividend. Your divisor goes outside, x squared plus 4. And now we're basically going to follow the same algorithm. We start off with a guess. We're going to guess how many times x squared goes into 2x cubed. So you want to look at the leading coefficients and the leading exponents. And then you can guess what. Now the way you should actually do the guess is by guessing multiplicatively. What times x squared would be equal to 2x cubed? And you immediately get 2x. Right? And think about that. 2x times x squared will give you exactly 2x cubed. Now you got to be careful where you put it. If your guess is just a term involving x, you must put it above the term that involves x. So it goes above the 6x. Now, you might not think that matters, but as I do these examples, you'll see that where you put that very first guess is going to affect the entire rest of the algorithm. So if you put it way too far over, you're going to be doing the process for too many steps, too many repetitions of the same steps. All right. So this kind of tells me when I'm going to be done. Um, and there are are no decimal points in this business. It's not like we're gonna actually put a decimal point and remember like in you know elementary school and you would add a zero and things like that. We're not doing any of that. When we get to the final um, term, we're done. We're gonna get our remainder and we'll be done. Okay, so that's our guess. Now I called it a guess, but it's not really much of a guess. Then you're gonna multiply 2x times x squared. That's gonna give you 2x cubed. And put it right underneath here and then you're going to multiply again times the other term which you do not use this term to guess you use it only when you are checking essentially you're multiplying your quotient times your divisor and putting it underneath the dividend 
So 2x times positive 4, that I, I crossed out my, there it is, positive 4. That'll be positive 8x. Uh, 2x times 4 will be positive 8x. Now look where I just wrote it. That's not the right spot. It must go under the term that has the same variable power. So that'll be 2x times 4 will be 8x. If something is positive, I just leave it blank. That's, that's positive 2. That's positive 8. Now, what was the next step in the division algorithm? It was subtraction, right? But this isn't just numeric subtraction. This is polynomial subtraction. So the way we do polynomial subtraction is we multiply by negative 1. That's an invisible negative 1. And then we distribute. That negative changes that 2 into a negative 2. That negative changes that 8 into a negative 8. I'm leaving a blank right here. Um, some people go so far as to put a 0x squared. If you really want to make sure that you keep that in line, that's what we call a placeholder. All right, and I'll get more into that later. Okay, so now this negative is gone. That's a negative 2x cubed and a positive 2x cubed. Those are going to cancel out. I've got a 3x squared and a 0x squared. That's going to be 3x squared. I've got a 6x and a negative 8x. That's going to be negative 2x. And then I've got a 16 and a 0, so I'm just a negative 16 and a 0. So I'm just going to bring down the negative 16, and then I start the whole process over again. So the next step, come back up here. Those are done. And guess what times x squared would be 3x squared? So when you're guessing, you're only looking at the leaders or the leading terms. And then you're guessing what times this x squared would be 3x squared. So it is 3. Now down here in my dividend line, I usually omit plus signs if they're not necessary. I, I know I had them in my original problem, but I usually omit them if they're not necessary. That's not true with the quotient. The quotient, if you have a plus sign, you must put it. So that's plus 3. And then I repeat the process. 3 times x squared, that'll give me 3x squared. And don't forget the 4. 3 times 4 will give me 12. Make sure you put the 12 underneath the term of the same Type it has to be a like term. And then again, if you like, or if you don't like to leave this blank, you can put 0x here if you like, yeah, just so that you, it looks full. Now, technically, that's a plus 12, that's a plus 0, and that's a plus 3. But I don't like to put the pluses. All right? Because as soon as you put those pluses, here comes your negative sign. This negative sign is going to distribute. It's going to make that into a negative 3. It's technically going to make that into a negative 0, but there's no such thing as negative 0. That's the same as 0. And then it's going to turn this into a negative 12. I know I skipped the negative 0 part before because there's really no such thing as negative 0. Negative 0 is still just 0. The leading terms will always cancel out. So 3x squared and negative 3x squared cancel out. And then you're going to combine all the like terms. So you have negative 2x and negative 0x. Well, that's just negative 2x, which is one of the reasons why some folks don't even put the placeholders. They just use arrows. 
just depends on who you're listening to. It means the same thing. It means ignore me or skip over me. I'm nothing, right? So it's just going right down. It's negative 2x. Now be very careful with negatives. This is a negative 16 and a negative 12. So that's negative 28. This is your remainder. Um, this is example one. So for the first two or three examples, I'm just going to illustrate the process and then I will take the answer in this form. I'll say, what's the quotient and what's the remainder? And you can just read them right off of here. The quotient is 2x plus 3. The remainder is negative 2x minus 28. All right. So that's the division, what we call the long division algorithm. Or simply known as long division. Let's do a few of these before I teach you another way to write the answer. It takes a little practice until we get to the point where we can dress up our answer in a, in a fancy suit here. Okay, let's try another one. So 8x cubed minus 2x squared, minus 9x minus 1, divided by 2x plus 1. Um, when you're doing this um, on, in your notebook or whatever you're using to write your work down, I recommend not even writing this down. This is the problem the way it will be written you know, in the, in the assignment but you're immediately going to rewrite it like this with the dividend on the inside and the divisor on the outside. Okay, so immediately rewrite You can save yourself a little bit of work by just taking this and doing that immediately. So see that, write that. Okay, so now we're going to take a guess. What times 2x, look at the liters, will be 8x cubed? It's funny that I'm calling it guessing. And I've just been saying it for so many years that I still say the word guess. You're not really guessing, right? Here's a better word. Insist. It ends with an exclamation point instead of a question mark. Insist that this is the correct number that will equal 8x cubed. It's not really a guess. There's only one thing that will actually work, and it is 4x squared. And notice where I put it. I put it immediately above the term that involves x squared, because that's what it takes. In order to get 8x cubed, and you only have 2x, you have to multiply by 4x squared to get it. So I think that word insist is much more powerful than just guessing. Okay, and now you're going to distribute. And you're going to find out right away whether you insisted correctly, right? 4x squared times 2x, if it does not equal 8x cubed, then I would immediately know that I did not insist on the right number. So these always match. The leaders always match. And you do have to use the distributive properties. So 4x squared is going to multiply by 1 and give you 4x squared. And again, technically, that's a positive 4x squared. 
but I'm just going to leave it blank because it might not be positive. It might, it might change to something else. In fact, it will change to something else. All right, now here comes the boom. That's the negative one. We typically don't write negative one. We just say minus. And then we distribute it. That becomes negative 8x cubed. This becomes negative 4x squared. Now you know why I didn't put a positive there a minute ago. Now you're going to combine the like terms. These guys are opposites. 8 and negative 8, they're going to cancel. And then you're going to combine negative 2 and negative 4. That's negative 6x squared. One of the main problems with mental math is that you still think subtracting when you see negatives. The, it's just very common. We're, we're humans. And so when you see the negatives, you might think I'm subtracting, but you're actually adding two negatives here. Negative 2, negative 4 is negative 6. So be careful with your mental math. Sometimes you think something that's not what you're actually doing. And here comes the algorithm. We're, we've gone around one time, and now we're going to repeat the process. So what? I can call it a guess, so you can say, what? Insist. What is it? That's multiplied by 2x to give me negative 6x squared. That's where you're looking when you're insisting. Well, what is it? If there's only one thing. It's negative 3x. That's the only way. There is no other way. So you got negative 3x. That was your insisted upon number, or if you want to call it a guess. And now check it. Negative 3x times 2x. It better match. That's negative 6x squared. Nice. And then the distributive property, negative 3x times 1 is negative 3x. Now, when something is positive, I usually leave it blank. I don't put a plus sign all the time. Um, the only exception is, of course, up here in the, uh, well, I guess there's two exceptions. One is up in the um, quotient and then down in the remainder. If you have plus signs in the quotient or if you have plus signs down in the remainder, you do have to put them. But when you're inside the algorithm, you can leave plus signs out of it. But watch. Here comes the boom. All right, here comes the negative sign. It's going to distribute, change this to a plus sign, okay? And I'm not going to leave that blank now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a plus sign. So it's really more of a style aspect, stylist aspect. It's not really, you know, I'm, I'm mandating that it has to be this way. I'm just telling you style-wise, it's better to just wait because you never know what sign something's going to be. So it's... Just, it's better just to let it be what it's going to be and not sort of force the issue there. So that one came out to be positive. I'm not going to erase it because it's positive. So now I'm going to cancel the leaders because one of them's negative, the other one's positive. Okay. And then I'm going to combine the like terms, negative 9x and positive 3x. So that's negative 6x. And then bring down the last term, negative 1, and start the whole process over again. So what, or if you prefer what, right? It depends how you're thinking about it. Times 2x is going to be negative 6x. That's a coincidence. We ended up with two negative 6s in a row. So that just means we're going to have another negative 3 up here. Although, last time it was negative 3x, and this time it's just negative 3. And then now distribute. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 1. Negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3 down here. And then here comes the boom. That's that negative right here. So negative times a negative is a positive 6x. 
and a negative times a negative is a positive three. Kill the leaders or cancel if you prefer that word. And then down here is your final remainder. You never go past the last term, right? You just stop when you get to the last term. Negative one, positive three gives us a remainder of two. So for this problem, I'm just going to list out my answers. Quotient is right here, 4x squared minus 3x minus 3. Remainder is 2. If you do this, you know, 100 times or maybe 50 times or who knows, maybe only 10 times, you might start to notice patterns and different things that happen using different powers and different terms and how your quotients and remainders are sort of related to each other. If you don't notice it, I'm going to make a big deal about it soon to sort of, you know, force that to become clear, I hope. All right, um, let's do a big monstrous one. I hope I can fit it on my whiteboard here. <laughs> um, for the next one, because my whiteboard is limited in space, I'm going to only write the long division part of it. I'm going to do what I kind of hope that you do as you read the question. So. Okay, example three. Um, this one's a, kind of a long one, so I'm just going to um, write it already in the long division uh, format so that it gives me more space to work. So it'll be the divisor is x squared minus 5, and the dividend is kind of a monster, 4x to the fifth plus 7x to the fourth. Minus 22x cubed minus 32x squared plus 10x minus 15. Does it fit? <laughs> Barely. All right, there we go. Okay. So, um, same basic technique. I'm going to try to like show less arrows and things like that um, and try to do it the more efficient, sort of sophisticated method. Um, if you still need the arrows to kind of keep track of everything, I'll, I'll try to at least point and do things like that. Okay. So you don't get too confused. So we look at the leader here, x squared, and then we look at the leader here, 4x to the fifth. And then we insist on what it must be. It must be 4x cubed. All right. You might notice a pattern. If you look at the leading power of the divisor, you subtract that from the leading power of the dividend, so 5 minus 2, and that automatically tells you what column you're going to start in. You're going to start in the cubed column. Okay, um, and now we'll multiply. So we got 4x cubed times x squared, so that's 4x to the fifth. And then 4x cubed times negative 5, that's negative 20x to the third. And look what I did. I put it in the wrong column, didn't I? So that gives you a chance to fix that, because if you keep that in the wrong column, this is where pencil really comes in handy, it should go over here, negative 20x cubed. So this process is column sensitive. Everything must lie in the column of its uh, rank or its degree. Here comes the boom, so we're going to change that to negative, change that to positive, cancel the leaders, bring down, again, technically you're subtracting nothing or adding nothing up to that term, so you can, some people like to put a zero there. Um, you're adding or subtracting those, so that'll be negative 2x to the third. I like to bring everybody down 
You can get away with only bringing one term down at a time, but it gets kind of messy and you might lose one of them. So I like to bring everybody with me. Let's all go to the next iteration of the algorithm. Now we repeat the process. So now look at our next leader. Yeah, we have 7x to the fourth and x squared. So we know it's going to be 7x squared. Yeah, because 4 minus 2 gives you squared. So by the way, once you set the first column, it pretty much just descends from there. There are some anomalistic you know, problems that kind of throw out off the pattern, but most of them follow a very regimented pattern. So 7x squared times uh, x squared is 7x to the fourth. And then 7x squared times negative 5 is negative 35x squared. See, this time I put it in the right column the first time. Okay, You're going to get these gaps whenever your divisor has a missing term. The divisor is allowed to have a missing term. We'll talk about the dividend in the next example. Let me go ahead and finish this. So here comes the negative sign. So multiply by negative 1, change that, change that to positive, cancel the leader, bring down the next term, negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared, bring everybody else down, 10x minus 15. And you can kind of look up here to see how many more cycles you have to go. We're going to need two more, two more iterations. So the next one will be negative 2x. Yeah, you can kind of see the pattern there. That's a cubed, that's a squared, so that's going to be just an x. All right, so negative 2x times x squared is negative 2x cubed. Negative 2x times negative 5 is positive 10x. You can put a positive sign here, but you know what's coming next is the negative, which is going to change this to a positive and then change that to a negative, which that's the reason why I don't put a positive there, because I know in two seconds I'm just going to be changing it to a negative. All right. And then now cancel the leader. Oh, look, we got a double cancel. That sometimes happens. The leader always cancels at every step or every repetition of the cycle. But sometimes you get some of the following or what we call trailing terms. Sometimes those cancel as well. So it looks like we have another gap here. Okay. Now, technically, there's a 0x here if you want to put that. It's not, it wouldn't be wrong. It's a placeholder. Uh, it's not really necessary because we're done, right? If this happens at the beginning of the problem, I'll talk about that in example four. The placeholders are, are mandated, but um, it's not required this time. We're basically done. Our last term will be positive three. Three times x squared is three x squared. And then three times negative five is negative 15. Here comes the negative, cancel, cancel. Yeah, and this is 0x, so you can just cancel that as well. And so your remainder is 0. So we have quotient 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus 2x plus 3. And we have remainder. Okay. Um, so in my next example, I'm going to discuss uh, what happens if you have a missing term in the dividend. So if you get a problem like this, which you probably will, The, div the dividend 
Did I say divisor earlier, but I meant dividend. The dividend, it's always bugged me, but they, they start with the same letter. The dividend cannot have any missing terms. Now, missing is a subjective term. What do I mean when I say missing? You know, I mean, as you read it from left to right, it should have one representative, one term of each power. So starting with whatever the highest is. So the highest term is x to the fourth. You can't have any missing terms when you're, when you're using long division or when you're dividing. So you need to put a placeholder. in that spot. So notice you have a four, you have a three, you have a one, and then you have a constant. Constant has no variable. Notice that there's a missing term in here. There is no two. So x squared is missing. And so we put zero x squared as the placeholder. All right, and this is only, this process only applies to the dividend. So when I write my dividend, I put x to the fourth, negative 6x cubed, placeholder. I usually just make placeholders positive, although it doesn't matter what you call it because it's, you could just put zero there if you want, but I'm putting a placeholder to know that that's holding a place for my x squares. Then I got 11x and then plus 5. All right. Now that rule does not apply to the divisor. The divisor just is what it is. So never change the divisor. Keep the divisor the same. Don't add any extra terms to it or anything like that. All right, and then here goes the algorithm step by step. So what, it's up here, what times x is x to the fourth? And as soon as you say it, it answers itself, right? x to the third. All right, x to the third times x is x to the fourth. So put it underneath there. x to the third times negative two is negative 2x to the third. And then subtract. If you don't want to use the parentheses and you, you want to kind of live dangerously, I'll show you how you can do it. You just have to be really careful. Put your negative here and then change this negative to a positive. And if, if I'm using two different colors, so if you do it this way, in pen or pencil, you need to just be careful. Now cancel the leader and then do it again. All right. So what times x? Oh, shoot. See what I did? I got ahead of myself because I was trying to skip a step. I, I didn't complete the process. Negative 6x cubed. Positive 2x cubed is negative 4x cubed. And then bring everybody down. Now I can do my next guess. What threw me off was trying to skip that parentheses step there. So you know, I told you that whenever I try that, if I'm not really careful, I can mess it up. All right, again, what times x is negative 4x cubed? Well, again, it insists upon itself. It's negative 4x squared. It's the only thing that if you multiplied it by x, you would get negative 4x cubed. Right? So negative 4x squared times x is negative 4x cubed. If you're a terrible guesser, that's OK. That just means you have to guess more times. So you'll guess, you'll multiply, these won't match, and you'll go, oh, I guess I'll have to guess again. So, I mean, it could take you several guesses to get it right, or it could only take you one guess, but I guarantee you these will match on your last guess. That might be one, two, three, or 10, 
but you will get it eventually. Uh, don't forget the distributive property, though. You notice I'm not drawing the arrows now. I'm trying to get it up to the college level here, so I'm just doing it mentally. Negative 4x squared times negative 2 is positive 8x squared. Again, you could put a positive sign there, but I'm just leaving it blank because I know what's coming. What's coming is my red pen here. I'm changing this to a positive, and then I'm changing this to a negative, and then I'm canceling the leaders. And then I'm starting the whole process again. Zero and negative 8x squared is just negative 8x squared. And bring down the rest of the gang. 11x and 5. If you're getting tired and you're like, are we there yet? Dad, how much longer we got to go? You can just look up here and tell you, we've got two more rounds, right? We're going around this two times. Um, I wish my whiteboard was a little bit bigger, but it's not. Or maybe I should start writing smaller, I don't know. One thing that is hopefully gotten clear by now is that each term should lie exactly above or below its respective power. So the next term is just going to be an x. So if you want to kind of streamline the process, you know that's going to be an x. And then just look down here, that's going to be a negative 8. Yeah, negative 8x. And then it's like you're not guessing, you're sort of forcing it into its position. So you got negative 8x times x, that's negative 8x squared. Negative 8x times negative 2 is 16x. Here comes my negative sign. Change that to a positive. Change that to a negative. Cancel the leader. And this will be our last round. So you got negative 5x and 5 or positive 5. Last guess, constant column, all constants, no variables. So just look at the leader and that's it. Yeah, negative 5, the leading coefficient. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is 10, positive 10. Change the sign. Positive, negative, kill the leader. You got positive 5 and negative 10. Add those together, you get a remainder of negative 5. I barely got it. So just to make my final answer clear, To make my final answer clear, I'm just going to box this guy, call it the quotient. And I've already boxed my remainder down here. I'm just going to write negative 5 a little bit larger so everybody can see that. The remainder is negative. It might be very low on the bottom of your screen there. So the remainder is negative 5. Okay. Um, I need to teach you another technique now. I don't stick with this um, process. Uh, the process stays the same. I don't stick with this reporting method of quotient and remainder. I just want to do a little flashback. Um, say, I don't know, fourth or fifth grade flashback. So just a little, let's take a little walk down memory lane before I do the next problem. Suppose I gave you a problem like this. I said, what's 9 divided by, um, I don't know, 5? I'm trying to make them easy. So 9 divided by 5 would be 1. Yeah. 1 times 5 is 5. Here comes the boom. Here, I'll even do it in red. <laughs> There's that negative. It's the same negative that I was doing down in here. And you would say, 
quotient. Now, I'm not sure if your teacher taught you that word. I hope so. I definitely know they taught you the word remainder. I mean, there's probably not an elementary school teacher on earth that doesn't say the remainder. So if, if you had a good third through fifth grade teacher, they probably taught you the vocabulary, which I think is super important, especially when you're young and you're learning how to talk and how to read and how to write and everything. So you say quotient is one, remainder is four. Or some, some teachers would write one R four. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, you're having a elementary school flashback. I know I am. I'm thinking, oh yeah, that was my teacher. One R four. Yeah. And here I am, you know, a little 10 year old or nine year old going, what the heck does one R four mean? And what we kind of explained to each other or kind of talked ourselves through it by saying the one is the answer. <laughs> And the, the four is the leftovers, right? It's like as if, you know, we did use the analogy of sharing cookies or pie or something. And you, you know, everybody gets one slice, but then there's four left over or something like that because you're sharing it with five people. You got nine cookies, five people, nine cookies. Everybody gets one and there's four for the teacher to take home, right? For her kids to eat or something. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying is that we are not going to be able to write it like that anymore. That's what you mean when you say 1R4. Quotient is 1, remainder is 4, so we call that 1R4. That's just too basic for, for this course. I, I got to kick it up to the next level. And so what did you learn how to do next? Right? What was the next thing? You learned how to write it like this. 1 and four-fifths, yeah? or you would just say one four-fifths like that, yeah? but the way you would say it is one and four-fifths, okay? But what that actually means, one plus four-fifths, and rarely ever do you have a third, fourth, or fifth grade teacher that would have the students write the answer as one plus four fifths. Most would take this answer, right? One and four fifths. Right? So I'll put that in the little thought bubble of what it was like back in the day, right? Back before you saw what everything was actually like. Okay. Well, this is what we're doing now. We are going to start writing it this way. And I'm going to use letters because this is algebra. And most of our problems involve the variable x. Okay. So the 1 is called qx, q of x. That's quotient. That technically it means quotient of x. Uh, there may come a day where we'll have a variable other than x. That's not today. So basically every problem is going to involve x. The 4, we're going to call r of x. Remainder, again, of x. Now here's the weird part. 5 is called divisor. I don't know if that's weird, but it's the denominator, right? If you're writing it as a, as a fraction, it's the denominator, also known as the divisor. And again, it's divisor of x, even if there is no x, because this doesn't have any x's. Now, here's the thing that I do a little bit differently than some, okay? And I kind of just, I don't, actually, I, I, the book actually does follow me on this one, but I call the dividend P. And I only do that because if I call the dividend D and then I call the divisor D, I already know that we're going to have a lot of confusion about 
how to write the final answer. So I will just call the dividend P, yeah. which you can kind of imagine upside down D if you, if you rotate it 90 degrees, just flip that D over. And there it is, it's a P, okay? I don't know. Whatever you wanna to do to remember it. And so no longer are we gonna write it as one R four. We are going to write our answers in the form like this. So again, let's let's piece everybody together. Who is one? Yeah, one is Q. That's one. That's the Q. And then the plus. Four. Four is R. And then divisor D. And for now, I won't even write the P, but technically what this means is that P over D is equal to Q plus R over D. That, that's kind of what we're saying here. Yeah. I've kind of run out of space to say that, but this is the, uh, the new form. It's actually what we call the true form. It's the true form of the result. You can call it new if you want it, but this is just what's actually been happening all along anyway. But now I want to start writing it this way. So having said that, example five. Five X cubed plus 30x squared, plus 45x, plus 12, over, uh, let's do it, x squared, plus 5x, plus 3. And maybe I'll just leave this down here as a reminder of how to write the answer. I might rub over it, you know, my arms or something as I'm going through, but we'll try to just keep that, keep that in our minds so we don't forget that, okay? All right. Now this one looks bad, but um, a couple things that I should stand, point out, there are no negatives, it's all positive. It does not mean that negatives won't show up in the process. They, they could, because you remember there's that subtraction step which could create negative signs. Um, the other thing is that the denominator has three terms now. So that means when I do my long division, it's going to have a few extra arrows, if you want to use arrows or lines or whatever we're using to, to um, illustrate them. Now, again, I wasted a whole bunch of my space writing it this way. So here's the trick. I don't know, really want to call this a trick. Immediately rewrite it like this. And so that I can save some space on my whiteboard here, I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. As I mentioned earlier, why, you know, take that extra minute when you could just write it like this in the first place. Okay. Numerator, that's your dividend. Here's your divisor. In the answer, you actually don't see the dividend, but it's that's sort of the question. But So maybe I'll explain that when I'm done. Let me get right into it here. So what times x squared is 5x cubed? Right here, 5x. You got to put it in the right spot, right? 5x times x squared is 5x cubed. 
5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times 3 is 15x. Now, because everybody is positive, I'm just going to leave them blank until the red pen comes in with the boom or the negative. So here comes my negative. Negative, negative, negative. Kill the leader. 30x squared minus 25x squared is 5x squared. 45x and 15x is 30x, or positive 30x. And then 12 is positive 12. Now, this is a very short trip. Right? There's only two rounds of the algorithm, two rounds, two rounds of repetition. So the last one, what times x squared is 5x squared? Oh, it's 5 again. So it has to be positive 5. It's OK to leave blanks here, but not up here. You don't want to have 5x5. That just looks funny. So it's 5x plus 5. Now do it again. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times 5x is 25x again. And then 5 times 3 is 15. I could put pluses, some people do, but then when you bring in the boom, then that negative has to change that to a negative, so you have to erase the plus and make it minus, which is why I just leave it blank, and then erase the plus and make it minus. Kill the leader. All right. I'm going to have to erase that. And your remainder will be 5x minus 3. So this one is q of x, 5x plus 5. This one's r of x, 5x minus 3. And so we're going to write our answer. Kind of a generic word answer. Q, that's 5x plus 5, plus R, 5x minus 3, all over D, x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay. Be careful when you type this on the computer. Um, if there's there's probably a pop-up menu, you got to make sure that it looks like a fraction. Um, if not, you can do something like this. You can put parentheses around the bottom, and that'll make sure that it's, the entire denominator stays in the um, in the bottom. Now, even though I'm calling this the answer, maybe I should just mention that the answer is kind of a generic word. What this means is P of X over D of X. You don't have to write that part. It's, this is just abstract. What this represents is the division of P divided by D. All right. And again, P is the dividend, which is on the inside P of X. I wish I could ask if that makes sense, but let me know. If it doesn't, I'll be here waiting. I think that was a pretty good introduction. Um, if I start another problem, I don't know where it's going to go. So um, I'll pick up with this next time. Um, well, I'll just kind of briefly review this procedure. And then I'm going to teach you another procedure. So um, I guess this is probably a good time to say goodbye. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Jordan. I'll see you on the internet.